Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. God is worthy of the praise, and we ought to give him the praise tonight. Hallelujah. I just want to say um, that I'm delighted that we're here tonight, that we can celebrate our God, and this is the opportunity for us to give his name the praise. How many folks want to give him the praise tonight? Amen. Come on, just put your hands together and give him praise wherever you are. I want you to consecrate the space where you are today. Tonight, I want you to just say that, Lord, you are worthy. Lord, you are awesome. Lord, you are magnificent. He is excellent, and he is everything that we stand in need of. And so we bless God. We honor him tonight. We thank him for this opportunity just to fellowship together this way. Um, I'm, I'm particularly overjoyed because in the midst of coronavirus, now let me just give you let, let me just give you a little background that in the midst of coronavirus, if, if you were in a foreign country and you were a missionary, conditions would be maybe not very suitable for you to be able to worship the Lord. Um, but, but we have an opportunity to worship him in the midst of everything that the enemy throws at us. Amen. And we are we are delighted that we have this venue, this opportunity just to give his name praise. Amen. And so wherever you are, I want you to just tell the Lord, thank you. This is our last worship service together in 2021. Amen. Because when we're finished, we're going to be in a brand new year, brand new you brand new situation amen and so we bless god for all of that tonight amen uh we just want to welcome all of our visitors who might be with us tonight if you're you're uh with us and you're visiting with us for the first time we just uh will give you the courtesy of calling you a visitor one time amen because we like to rope you into family as family after uh you have had the opportunity to just be around us just one time amen so welcome to uh haskell heights first baptist church we also nickname ourselves The Hype. You can reach us and find out more about us on our website at www.haskellheightsfbc.com or you can also reach us on our mobile app. Download our mobile app on our mobile app station. Amen. And uh, we, we'll just thank God for this opportunity. Amen. To, to give his name the praise. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I'm getting some feedback right now. Amen. But we... Uh, we, we're, we're, we're thankful for that. Amen. We got, we, we put together some set. Amen. So are you locked on to the, uh, are you locked on to that now? Amen. So I just need to lock back on. Amen. To our, our, our studio. Amen. Amen. We're, we're good right now. So, so we thank God just tonight. Amen. For the, the opportunity just to share Jesus Christ with you. Amen. And that's what we're going to do as we enter ourselves into this brand new year. We want to uh, also uh, just announce to you a couple things, make a couple of announcements on tonight. Uh, first of all, uh, we, we want to lift up our brother Tim um, Culbreth. We, we want to ask you to just lift his, um, his, his, him up right now because he, he uh, saluted his father goodbye today. Amen. He laid his father to rest. That's uh, Mr. John Henry Culbreth. And we, we thank God um, he's of our community and we thank God for his life. Amen. And his living and for his legacy. And so we're asking that you would just keep your arms around Tim and just lift him up in prayer. Amen. We also want to uh, remind all the ladies that uh, fear and uh, fear and faith, that's going to be your last presentation. And that's going to be when, sister? Saturday. Amen. Saturday at 10 a.m. Saturday at 10 a.m. And so we're asking that you would uh, you go ahead and, and, and get together with the ladies and be a part of that experience because it has been a very fruitful um, time that the ladies have shared together. Amen. We also want to tell you that we're getting excited about January 9th, next Sunday, not this Sunday, but next Sunday. We're going to be uh, we're going to be commencing our fast, our Daniel fast. Um, and it will it will go all the way through till uh, the, the fifth Sunday in January. Amen. That'll be our 21 days in which uh, time we're going to celebrate our Men's Day. We'll be giving you more information about that. So men, stand, uh, stay tuned for all the information that we will have tonight just to, uh, to, to, to um, share with you and, and over the next couple of weeks. But get yourself prepared. We'll be loading some information on the Daniel Fast. I got some exercises for you. We got some games going on. We got some, some good stuff that's really going to happen that as we fast this month, we want you to cleanse your body, but not only cleanse your body, we want your spirit cleansed. 
And it's important that we take an opportunity just to just to pause and put God in his first place. Amen. Very early in the year. So we uh, we thank God for that. Um, I, without um, I'm, I'm going to pray in, um, in in a little bit before before the word, the ministry of the word. But we do have um, uh, an opportunity right now to hear from our um, our, our men's ministry leader, Brother Ephraim Jennings, our women's ministry leader, Brother uh, Sister Yvette. Uh, Bradley, and we're going to also hear from our chairman, our deacon chairman, Brother Aaron Wilson, and then uh, Minister Woody is going to is going to pray with us, Amen. And then we're going to um, I ask you to join me in a time of just some worship together, Amen. Before we minister the word that will I believe will bless your soul on tonight and and help you in the days to come. I am I am convicted that this is going to bring us. Um, into a prosperous place. Amen. That the word that the Lord has given us. Amen. On tonight. Amen. So receive with us tonight. Amen. Brother Ephraim Jennings. All right. Is Brother Ephraim with us right now? Okay. Not yet. Okay. So uh, Sister Yvette, are you there? Amen. And we're going to just uh, ask you to just turn your attention to them for just a, a few moments. Good evening. I bring you greetings from our women's ministry. It's so uh, good to be with you tonight. I'm just going to go ahead into um, what God has given me to give you. Uh, Psalm 65 and 11 says, You crown the year with your goodness. Your path overflow with rich food. Uh, Deuteronomy 31 and 8 says, But the Lord is the one who is marching before you. Hmm. He is the one who will be with you. He won't let you down. He won't abandon you. So don't be afraid. Oh my God. So we can say there is good news tonight. Uh, God always wants our future to be bright. Uh, his intention is to surround us with abundance and blessing. I encourage each and every one of you to have faith in that intention as we go forth into the new year 2022 knowing that you don't have to fear the uncertainty of the future uh, or what lies ahead. Uh, we thank God tonight. Have faith in God and, and always, oh my God, uh, lead to him to steer you in the right direction. I say happy new year and may God continually richly bless each and every one of you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord while we wait to. Amen.
Chicks are here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We were just waiting on our chairman to come up before us. Amen. Let me see if we if we can get him on the screen here. so he can hear us. All right, Brother Aaron, if you're with us, if you, if you start your video. Yes, sir. Good evening, Africa family, uh, friends, and visitors. I'm Deacon Aaron Wilson, and I'm thankful for the opportunity to speak with you this evening. I'm thankful for still being a number. I'm thankful for my Lord and Savior who's given me a uh, the opportunity to speak and it blessed me throughout this year. I want to thank Pastor for the opportunity just to share with you some of my uh, hopes and aspirations for the new year. Um, as I was watching the news this evening and I saw wild wildfires, wildfires and storms and, and of course COVID is still on the rise. And initially I thought, oh my God, we are in trouble. Then the spirit hit me and it says, we serve an awesome God, a God who has never lost a battle. And as most of you know, if you've been out this weekend, if you turn the TV on, you have you observed that there's been a whole lot of football playoffs and things going on on the TV. And there's been losers and there's been winners. Guys, I want to tell you and say that we are a part of a team that cannot lose. We are blessed. We are, if you have accepted Lord as Jesus Christ as your Savior, you cannot lose. So thank be, thanks be to God to be a part of a winning team. If I had to, I'm going to share one scripture with you this evening, and that scripture is going to come from Romans 8, 38 and 39. Romans 38 and 39. And it reads as follows. Um, it says, what can separate, uh, in, in, in paraphrasing, it's saying, what can separate us from the love of God? And guys, we, we realize we have gone through a, a great deal of things. We have had the uh, storms, we have had uh, tornadoes out of this, that we've never heard of before. But through all of that, nothing can separate us from love that God has for us, no matter what you've done in the past or what's going to occur in the future. Nothing can separate you from love of, for the love of God. So as we look forward to 2022, I encourage each of you, hang on and stand in and hold tight on to the love that God has for you and love that same love you share with others. No matter what occurs, if there's sickness, illness, death, whatever the situation, do not let anything separate you from the love of God. Because love covers all. And God is love. He so loved us, he gave his only begotten son. So we cannot lose that we are part of this team. So love one another in 2022. And do not let anything separate you from the love of God. We wish and we pray that you have a wonderful and a blessed 2022. To God be the glory. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Appreciate it. Amen. God bless you. And we thank God for... Uh, just an opportunity to hear from our um, from from our chairman and uh, from our women's ministry. If we can get uh, Brother Efferman, we will, and uh, if we can get uh, Minister Woodian, we will. If not, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to ask you to join me in uh, just a moment of prayer, and then we're going to uh, have a moment of praise to our God. Amen. How many folks can agree with me that we should say, "Oh, give thanks unto the Lord." for he is good. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And he's worthy. Amen. Worthy to be praised.
Come on, let's um, let's bow our heads right now and, and ask God's uh, grace, mercy, and peace. Hallelujah. Father, we, uh, we bless you tonight, Lord God. We honor you and we praise you. We give your name all the glory because you alone are worthy of the praise. God, we, uh, we, we just pause right now, Lord God, at the end of this very year that we have taken opportunity even now, Lord God, to walk with you all the days of this year, Lord God. Sometimes there have been high mountains, Lord God, that we talked about in prayer even this morning. And sometimes there have been some deep valleys, Lord God. But, but we thank you that you are the God who brings everything level, Lord God, that your promise was to make the crooked street straight, Lord God, to bring the, the high mountains back to level and to bring the low valleys back to level. And so we thank you, O oh God, that we walk on a level with you. We thank you, O oh God, that you've, you've supplied all of our need according to your riches and glory, not according to our need, not according to our desires, but according to your riches you have supplied all of our need. Lord God, we thank you that we have counted on you for our daily bread, day by day, moment by moment, Lord God. We thank you that when we were sick, you have healed our bodies, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that when we needed a way made out of no way, that you were that way out of no way, Lord God. So we bless you tonight. We honor you, Lord God, and we give your name the praise that only you, God, are worthy of. And as we uh, as we seek to worship you today, Lord God, we're going to uh, we're going to lift our voices before you, Lord God, because you're worthy to be praised. We're going to lift up, Lord God, our request to you because we know that we can cast our cares upon you because you care for us, Lord God. And we bless you even now, God. So I lift up this Haskell Heights First Baptist Church and everyone connected to everyone associated with Haskell, even now, Lord God. We lift up every need. We lift up, Lord God, every concern. We lift up right now every praise, Lord God. We lift up everything before you and ask, oh God, that you would do just what you do best. Be God to us, Lord God, in every circumstance. We thank you for great deliverance. We thank you for your promise. And we thank you for your peace. Now in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let every heart say amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. Amen. How many folks would like to just uh, join me for just a moment to all give thanks unto the Lord. get this technology together. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, put your hands together. Why don't you put your hands together? He's worthy. Yes, he is worthy. Hallelujah. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, yes, he is good. Yes, he is good. He is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy. Tell me. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. 
good, yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good. He is worthy, worthy, for he is good, yes, he is good. Tell him that he's good right now because God is awesome. He is awesome. He is worthy to be praised. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. How many folk know that he is good right now? He is good. Hallelujah. We bless his mighty name. We, we, we thank God for his awesome manner. We thank God for who he is, for what he's been to us, and, and all that God, hallelujah, um, has has meant to us, Amen. In this year, uh, I just want to call, I just want to call to your attention, Amen. Um, that that God has been faithful, Amen. Um, he has certainly been faithful to us. We uh, there are there are so many people who have have suffered so many devastating circumstances, and we've been uh, we've been privileged to be able to pray for people and to be able to pray people out and. And, and I'm, I'm just delighted, amen, that the Lord saw fit amen, to, to cause us to, to band together to pray for the needs, not only the needs of our own individual houses, but for each other. And I'm deeply, deeply grateful as a shepherd, amen, that, that the people of God would, would seek to, to cover each other in prayer, amen, to plead the blood of Jesus Christ over every circumstance, over every household, Amen. Would you just would you just go ahead and put that in the atmosphere? Would you just tell that I plead the blood of Jesus over my brothers and sisters? Amen. Over their cares and concerns, over their households, over their needs, over everything that they stand in need of. We 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 ask even now that that the Lord, hallelujah, will will bless mightily. Hallelujah. Even in this time to come. Bless mightily in this time to come. Amen. Amen. And so we have a we we have our brothers. Amen. Woody, I'm going to um turn box pants off, Woody. Why is it not showing? I don't know. 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 I don't We got you on. Okay. We ready? Yes, sir. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your grace and mercy, for your covering, for your keeping us, Lord God, for you doing everything you promised. We place our faith, Lord God, in you. We place our trust in you, Lord God. We thank you for covering and keeping us, Lord God. Through 2021, we thank you for all things, Lord God, that you do, for you do all things well, keeping us from danger, seen and unseen, Lord God. We bless you, we praise you, magnify and glorify you, Lord God, for you being God, and beside you, there is no other. We place everything, Lord God, in your hands, Lord God, as we give you the praise and the honor and the glory for what you are going to do, what you promise us you would do, Lord God, what we believe you to do, Lord God, as we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen, amen. Praise amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We bless God and 
we thank God. Thank you, Minister Woody, for uh, just uh, carrying us, amen, to the throne. We can't get enough prayer. How many folks understand that? Amen. As, as Woody even made reference that as the Lord has kept us all these days, amen, he's kept us. He's been a faithful God, amen. And we, um, there, was a, there was a little song that I can remember, amen, um, that we talked about in, um, in previous days where the Lord has been faithful to us, amen. This was Donnie McClurkin that said, I call you faithful. Your name is faithful. Hallelujah. And we bless God for his faithfulness, amen. Would you just uh, join me for just a moment with that? Amen. that the Lord has been faithful, you can just do this. You can say, yeah, 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 hallelujah. I call you holy, your name is holy, you are so holy to me. I call you holy, your name is holy, holy you are, and holy you be. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah, yeah, yeah. Well, I call you righteous. Your name is righteous. You are so righteous to me. Oh, I call you righteous. Your name is righteous. Righteous you are and righteous you'll be. Yeah, 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 yeah. Won't you say it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I call you awesome. Your name is awesome. You are so awesome to me. Oh, I call you awesome. Your name is awesome. Awesome you are and awesome you be. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, I call you faithful. Your name is faithful. You have been faithful to me. Oh, I call you faithful. Your name is faithful. Faithful you are and faithful you'll be. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody call him healer. I call you healer. Your name is healer. You are the healer to me. Oh, I call you healer. Your name is healer. Healer you are and healer you'll be. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody give his name a praise right now because he is a healer. He is a deliverer. He is faithful. He is awesome. Hallelujah. He's our righteous God. Somebody say, yeah. Hallelujah. We bless God and we honor him for who he is, for what he's done. And we thank him, amen, on tonight for just being God. Amen. How many folks can just give his name praise just for him being God Amen. to us. Amen. Amen. I want you to uh, just pause with me and, and take a moment and, and let's go to uh, Romans chapter 6. Amen. Romans chapter 6. And I'm not going to be there long, but I just want to drop a word in your spirit, literally a word in your spirit, so that we uh, might be able to approach, leave this year. Hallelujah. Leave this year. Amen. In successful fashion and be uh, be thrust into this brand new year that God has blessed us with. And I, I am deeply appreciative that you took the time you saw fit to, uh, to, to come and be a part 
but with us just in this worship opportunity. Amen. Now, I, I always look at it life like this, that a lot of people want to be in somewhere, um, you know, uh, expressing uh, their, their, uh, their, their gratitudes and, and joys and happiness. Amen. Um, in, in, in different venues and in different places. Amen. But I can't think of a better place to be. Amen. Than in the presence of the almighty God and in the word. I want to be in the word when the year comes to an end. And I want to be in the word when the year starts again. Amen. And so that the new year uh, comes in with a new me, a new experience. How many folks are ready for just a new experience? Mm -hmm. How many folks are declaring that, you know what, I, you know what, I'm kind of tired of what's been going on in this old year. And I have this expectation that God is going to do a new thing. Would you say that with me? Would you say a new thing? God is going to do a new thing, amen, in you. And he's going to do a new thing in your life and a new thing through you, amen, if you will just allow God into your uh, situation, amen. So I'm going to ask you to turn with me to Romans chapter 6. And uh, verses 1 through 4 is, is where I'm going to be. And now, you, you do know that uh, as, we, as we embark upon, uh, you know, preaching out of the book of Romans or even teaching out of the book of Romans, that we always uh, have to give, have to give um, God praise for the, for the wonderful thing that he's done in Romans. I think Romans is probably the most difficult book. Now, people would argue with me. I think it's the most difficult book in the Bible. Um, but, but it's because it's so comprehensive that it tells the whole story. You know, we just, um, we spent a lot of time in the book of Isaiah talking about how Isaiah has 66 chapters, just like the, the Bible has 66 chapters. And Isaiah is really kind of a mini Bible. It really kind of mimics what, what God was doing all through the Bible is really kind of the, the thought pattern and also the theme pattern of Isaiah. But when you look at the book of Romans, you are going to look at Paul's, uh, his Magna Carta. Amen. And so, and so every, every writer, every poet, every artist, every, every person who really wants to leave their mark, and you, that should be you, who wants to leave their mark on society, that, that I did not come here so that I could just... Um, just participate with what was going on. I came to be a mover, a shaker. How many folks can agree with me today that, that I didn't come here to just be ordinary? That's part of my confession that I say, God, I didn't come here to be ordinary, which means that I came to live an extraordinary life. I came to, to make my mark. I came to leave somebody better. I came to turn something that was upside down, right side up. I came to make a difference in the world. Amen. And, and I want you to make some noise right now in your personal space. If you came to make some noise in this world. Amen. I, I, I thank God that God gives us the gifting, that God gives us the anointing, that God gives us the opportunity to make some noise on his behalf. And if I got God living on the inside of me, Amen. Then God can make a difference using my vessel, using what he has given me uh, to, to change this landscape some kind of how. Amen. And I want you to be able to see yourself going into a brand new year as a brand new you. Amen. New year, new me. Would you say that with me? New year, new me. Hallelujah. New year, new me. I'm not going to be the same old thing. Now, I've learned some things in 2021, but, but 2021, the things I've learned are going to be the platform that, that, I've, that I've learned to elevate me into my set place in 2022. Amen. Amen. And so I believe that the word from God in the book of Romans can really help propel us to the place where God really wants us. And, and it's, um, I believe that God is not going to just cut this loose just on tonight. I believe that he's going to give it to us. He's going to, he, he's going to rehearse this with us and he's going to give it to us individually and corporately. I believe that God is going to rehearse this word with us so that we can, um, so, so that we can be sharper, so that we can be better and that we can appropriate what God has for us. And so in this Magna Carta that I call the book of Romans, amen, I call it the Magna Carta, it's the book of Romans, 
But, but Paul makes his strongest appeal for the gospel. And one of the reasons, if you're a good historian, uh, you, you'll probably like this, that the reason that Paul, in his insight, that wanted to make the strongest argument to the church in Rome was because the Roman Empire had the then control over all of the earthly affairs. That, the, that Rome was the capital that was at the center of everything going on in the known world at that time. And Paul had this mindset about him that if I can just reach Rome, hallelujah, if I could reach the, the big wicks, if I could go and get to the, to, the, to the ones who have all the influence, if I can go and get to the ones who got all the power, you know, when, when you come across, um, um, you know, th this is th this is common in, in, in gangs and, and in, you know, teams and those kinds of things, that if you go to the leader and you can influence the leader, that the leader then will, if the leader can change, then all the folks that follow the leader can change as well. And Paul said that if I can go to Rome and give them the best argument I know how with this gospel of Jesus Christ, that I believe that we can change the world. How many folks agree with me tonight that I didn't come here to be ordinary. I came here to be extraordinary and I came to change the world. I didn't come here so that the world could be the same after I leave as when I came, but I came here to make my impact on the world. So check, walk with me to Romans um, 6 chapter and, and let's look at the first four, um, sorry, first four verses here. And it says, what shall we say then, starting at verse 1, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And he says, he comes to a conclusion in, in verse 2. He says, certainly not. How shall we uh, who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many as of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? It says in verse 4, Therefore, we be, were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Amen? And, and I, I, I tend to think that, you know, Romans is often very difficult because, because Paul really put all his theological prowess into this book. And so I want to take, I want to take just a moment and kind of go over that word with you one more time before I just kind of pour out what I believe that God would have for us to look at tonight. Amen. That, that we're dead to sin, but we have to be alive to God. A lot of us have, um, have trouble. We, we struggle with this area that, that we want to be alive to God, which means that we want to be open to God. We want to hear from God. We want our ear channels open and tuned to God. You know how if you got your radio frequency tuned to the right thing, or if you got that serious, uh, serious, uh, serious, FM, yeah. The um, if if you got those radios that 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 will help you to you know tune into literally any kind of music, any kind of broadcast, you know what we what we need to do is we need to tune ourselves into God, Amen. Um, we need to be on His frequency so we can hear from Him. And I'm gonna tell you this: that if you could somehow tune into God. That, that when you've got your frequency turned, tuned in for him, you can hear his voice. And when you can hear his voice, God will say, go this way and not that way. God will say, no, not this, not but that. God will tell you to, which way to go. And he will make, like we said, crooked streets straight. He will make what our valley experiences on level. And he'll bring down mountains so that, so that you're able to go across and get to the landscape where God intends for you to go to. Amen. It says that what? then shall we say? What shall we say then? It starts out like this, and any passage that would start out saying something like, so what should we say about these things? Amen? Well, well you have to, you got to go back to chapter 5 and try to find out what was the argument in chapter 5. And, and in chapter 5, the argument was about how um, that, that there was life in Christ, but death in Adam. That was the first Adam, and, 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 and there was the second Adam. That there was uh, Adam, and there was Jesus Christ. And they had this intellectual argument going on, saying that, well, who is it that we're supposed to live like? Who is it that we're supposed to mimic? Who is it that we're supposed to follow? And, and, and as they reasoned themselves, 
ourselves uh, across these kinds of thought patterns. It said, what shall we then say? It says, shall we consent, continue in sin that grace may abound? Now, now let, let's just deal with that for a moment because there are a lot of folks that don't like this idea of grace. A lot of people just don't like to give people grace. Amen. And, and, and but but grace is probably the most powerful concept we will ever be introduced to in all of Scripture because it summarizes the total character of our God. It talks about how our God is much different than every other God that's on the landscape, which are not real gods. But 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 our God is different. And this is how he's different. Let me just drop this in your spirit that our God saw our need and saw our predicament and saw our situation and said that I'm not going to send a representative. I'm not going to send the congressman and I'm not going to send the mayor because the mayor doesn't have enough influence and enough power. I can't even send the president or the prime minister. I can't send the king or the queen of, of, of that jurisdiction because they might have some power, but I need somebody that's got all power to, to be able to come and take care of the right situation so that my people can ex have a right kind of experience with the right God so that their, so their lives can turn out in the right way. Y'all hear what I'm saying in this house. He said this, that, that, that shall we continue in sin so that grace may abound because the argument was this, that, that they were saying that, you know, if God, um, where, where every time we sin, that he applies grace. When we sin, should we then now sin more so that God can apply more grace? And I would tell you that if that's the way you're thinking tonight, or if that's the way you're thinking going through life, then you don't know a lot about relationships. Amen. Would you say that with me? Say relationships. You don't know a lot about relationships. Amen. Relationships work on this wise, that, that we'll give you a chance and, and we want to work with you. We want to help you become who it is that you are supposed to become. And, and, and yes, we'll take some falls and we'll, we'll also, you know, we, we can understand when you fall down and we want to be there to pick you up and we want to be able to help you. And we understand that you got faults and failures. And we understand that there's some foolishness in life that will keep you kind of bound up and, and in a relationship, in a strong relationship, it, it really it works out this way that, that the partner is there for the other partner to say that I've got your back in all of this stuff. As long as you're trying to get somewhere, I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep striving. I'm going to keep encouraging. And that's what God has in his heart for his people. That God says he knows what we're made of because he made us. God knows what we're capable of because he lives in us. God knows all about us. He understood. He understands everything that we think and he understands where we're going. God knows the road and the pathway. He knows he's the GPS to get us to where we've got to, to get in life and to go in life. And he understands, hallelujah, that, that we are just frail and that we need, we need encouragement along this journey. You know, a lot of folks don't know how to encourage one another. I, I wish that we would, we, we would leave old ways behind in 2021 and learn that in 2022, that if we can be of encouragement to somebody, that God can be of encouragement to us. God said, what you make happen for others, I will make happen for you. Amen. And so it behooves you to help somebody along the way, not criticize, not talk about, not turn your back on, but, but actually try to help somebody become somebody. Amen. Because when you're helping somebody become somebody, God is saying to you that, that as you help them, I'm going to be helping you. As you push them, I'm going to be pushing you. As you encourage them, I'm going to be encouraging you. The strange thing about our God is that God applies grace, which is unmerited favor. God, y'all say favor ain't fair. It's favor is never fair. It's, it's, let, let's look at it like this, that, that favor is that thing that God has plenty of and abundance of that he will bestow upon us, not because we deserve it, but simply because he has it to give. 
and he has it in abundance to give. And God knows this. He's the best psychologist that I've ever seen in my experience that because God knows that you can encourage somebody out of their dark day and encourage somebody out of their situation rather than criticize them out of it, that God knows that I can push you and help you to become everything that you were destined to become. They were asking this crazy question, should if sin causes grace to increase, then should we sin more so that we can get more grace? Amen. You don't know anything about relationship because I, if you had, if you walk with God long enough, you will understand this one thing about God and you will understand this one thing about relationships that if somebody helps you, that you want to be of help to them, that that one hand washes the other. Amen. You got to, you got to help somebody help you and you got to help put that help in return that when God shows love toward you, that the only the only a reasonable response is for you to turn back and show love toward God. When there are people who have helped me out of my dark situations, when there were people who came alongside and said, you know what, it won't be like this. And you know what, sometimes the old folks like to say it like this, baby, trouble won't last always. They will encourage you and let you know that, that you might be in a down place, but, but you're not going to stay down forever. Amen. The storm won't last forever. Somebody needs to understand that, that, that some people can recognize when you're in the midst of a battle and when you're in the midst of a storm and they will tell you that, listen, I got your back while you're in the storm. I'll be your umbrella. Amen. And I'll make sure that you, that, that, that you can get through this and come to the other side because I see you in the future. Somebody to say, put that in the atmosphere. I see you in the future and you look better. Hallelujah. Better than you did on yesterday. Better than you did on today. I look down the road and I can see what you will become. I can see what God has for you. I can see some things in you that you can't because of the blindness created by your circumstance, the stuff that you can't see by yourself. I can see some of that stuff in you. Hallelujah. God is saying that I see greatness in you. Hallelujah. You, you say, who, me? Absolutely yes. Yes, you. I, I see greatness in you. And God is saying that if there's greatness in you, I don't want anything in this world to be an obstacle for uh, against you getting to your great place. How many folks want to get to their great place on, on today? Amen. You want to get to your great place. He says, no, I, I got a, I got an answer for you. No, if you got, if you're right about relationships, when God says, when I take you out of the miry clay, it's not for you to get in some more miry clay so that you can watch me take you out again. But the proper response is to say, God, thank you for what you've done for me. How many folk got to thank you, God, in, my, in your spirit right now? Thank you, Lord. How many folks can reflect over 2021 and say, you know, God got me out of some situations. I had some tests that I didn't study for, but God met me in the classroom. I had some, I had some situations that were going on. Hallelujah. But, but, and, and, and I didn't know how I was going to get out, but God made a way out of no way. I, I had some situations where I was down to my last dime. You ever been down to your last dime? And God had a way of making, giving you, get, putting more money than you could even experience that God has a way to overcome every struggle and every challenge and every trouble. I got news for you that God will, hallelujah, support your cause. He said that if you're in right relationship with God, God will, when you get yourself stuck, he'll pull you out. And the only response is, God, thank you for what you've done. What can I do for you? So no, I won't get myself buried in great and deeper sin because grace abounds that the, the, uh, what I recognize is the pattern is that when I get myself in sin, I can expect the grace of God to come behind that and to pull me out of that sinful situation. And my heart becomes grateful for what God has done for me. And when my heart is grateful for what he's done for me, I then express myself in praise and adoration to God by saying, God, I don't want to get back in that thing, but I want to walk closely, more closely with you. When somebody helps you, you ought to be of good, you, you ought to show, show good uh, benevolence toward them. Amen. He answers this question in verse two. He says, certainly not. And, and if you, and if you can see, hallelujah, 
that, that I, I said I wanted to share one word that can really just change your whole landscape at, as you move on the in, to the next stage into 2022, that, that this one little word is no. Somebody, I need you to shout it with me. You might, you, know, you might be in the company of some folks right now. You can't shout, so just do, you know, do it under your breath or you know, kind of be shouting on the inside. You know what I mean? But, 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 but you got to be able to say no. And I mean unequivocally no. I mean uh, um, no. I, I mean certainly not. There are 15 such occasions of this particular, uh, y'all bear with me for a moment, th th this particular Greek construction. That means it, th that this word was originally written in Greek. And I told you already that Romans is difficult. But, but when we study Roman, this thing is called, called me genoita. In, in, in the Greek, it's called meganoita, and it really says absolutely not. It says emphatically not. It says certainly not. It, it says you've got to be kidding. It, it's the kind of expression that, that, that really would, in the, in the modern day, we would say stuff, man, you better get out of my face. Absolutely not. Is there something that you are emphatic about in your life that says that I will not, it, you can't pay me enough. You can't, you, you can't influence me enough. You can't get me drunk enough. You can't get, you can't try to get me over to that side. You can't get me over to this thing. You, you can't get me to go past this, this, this position right here. Cause I'm solid. Somebody say solid with me. I'm solid where I'm standing right now on this thing. That's the kind of force that's behind that word. He was asking, should we send more so that we can get more grace? He says, certainly not. No. No. He says, let me ask you a question. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? I mean, just let's be reasonable. How can we, if we died to sin, how can we then still live in sin? I mean, if dead is dead, then dead can't be alive and dead at the same time that that God is saying to us that that we can't we can't those of us who have died to sin can no longer live in sin and i asked myself the question as i studied the text that how is it that we struggle with dying to sin and yet still living in sin let me make that real plain for you how is it that we keep making the same mistakes over and over again how is it that we find ourselves caught up in the prison of, of sinful behavior and patterns and activities and thoughts? And, and, and how is it that we find ourselves loving the Lord on one hand? And, and, and wanting to follow the Lord with all of our lives and wanting to, wanting to be uh, more to him so he can be more to us. Amen. How can we find ourselves locked in the prison of, of sinful patterns and behaviors when God has died to set us free? And the only reasonable answer that you could have in this intellectual discussion that Paul was having with his people is that you haven't had a revelation, a proper revelation, hallelujah, of, of, of who you are and what you are. You know, the enemy will do everything that he can to try to hide the fact that you are who you are. I'm going to preach to you for just one moment like I've been preaching all year, that you are greater, hallelujah, than you know on the inside, than you're giving yourself credit for. And I'm not telling you to get wild with it. I'm talking about serving God with it. If God chose you to be an onboard vessel, hallelujah, for him to live on the inside, if God chose you for redemption, if God chose you to be his son, to be his daughter, if God chose you to, to do great things, if God says, I'm going to be on board with you and I just want you to use the gifts and in ingenuity that I've given you personally to come to the place that I've already destined for you. Hallelujah. I got a prepared place for you that I, that, that I need you to get to because you're something special. I need to tell somebody as they leave that old year to leave that old you in that old year. That old you that was thinking that, that you could not do some things because you were too old. You didn't have the right education. You didn't have the right op 
opportunity you didn't have. God can make a way out of no way. How many folks believe that right now? If you believe that, you ought to lift your hands right now and just say, God, I believe you can make a way out of no way. I, some, he needs to be able to see that people, God is not trying to make you rely on your own gifts and strengths and talents because he put the talents in there. He's the one that lives on the inside. He just wants you to yield yourself as a vessel to him and say that God, if you just, if you live on the inside of me, I will yield the wheel to you. Let God do some of your driving because some of y'all can't drive good anyhow. So you need to let God do some of your driving for you. In fact, you need to let God do all of your driving for you. You need to let God set the destination in your GPS so that you can get to where you need to go in this brand new year. Oh yes, I'm trying to encourage you, but, but you got to leave some, some old things, hallelujah, in the old year. You got to pick up some new stuff in this new year. God has blessed us when the clock turns 1201 that God has given us the opportunity to say you to say this little emphatic word that we find in this scripture. Certainly not. Somebody say no. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be what I used to be. I'm not going to be what they what they said about me. I'm not going to be what I thought used to think about myself. I'm not going to be what I got trapped into. I'm not going to be what I what I thought caught me, hallelujah, and, and grabbed a hold of me. I got a revelation right now in the word of God that says this, that, that, that if God be for me, he is greater than the world who could be against me. Amen. That he, the one who lives on the inside of you is greater than the one who tries to fight you on the outside. And so you need to recognize who you are. You need to recognize who your father is, who your God is. And it starts by receiving him as your God. Amen. Sometimes we play too many games with God and we take him on a casual basis, which means that, yeah, we'll show up in church sometimes on Sunday. It's not about church. I want you to understand it's about relationship. God says, I want you connected with me because if you're connected with me, then I'm connected with you and I've got all power in my hands. I've got all power. I know the road and I know where the bumps are. I know where the, where the pitfalls are. I know how to handle your enemies and I know how to take you to some places that you don't even know how to pronounce yet. Oh, don't let me get started right now. He said, look at this. He said, certainly not. How can we live in sin when we've died to sin? How many folks have died to sin? Read on in the text. He says, do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Paul was saying this, that I know it sounds intellectual, but I need you to get this thing. I need you to understand this thing that you weren't, you, 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 when you were baptized into Christ Jesus, and I'm not just talking about taking down in the water. Because a lot of people, he said, there's a John's baptism, but there's a baptism that comes with the Messiah. That, that there's a baptism into Jesus Christ. That means that you have, that you got, you are connected with him. That means that you are, part, are on his team. That means you are in his family. That means you are part of his tribe. That means you are part of who he is and, 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 and he's in you and you're in him. And he says that, that you're baptized. That means you've been saturated. Y'all know the story that I tell you about baptism. Let me talk to you about it. I got a few more minutes before we, before we uh, find ourselves getting ready to cross over. But, but, but the whole idea of baptism comes from this little word where the, in the ancient culture, they used to take white cloth, hallelujah, and white cloth didn't have much, but didn't have a whole lot of, 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 of value by itself because it was just simply white cloth. But, but when they wanted to make it very expensive cloth, they would dye it in this very expensive purple dye. And when they would take the cloth and the white cloth and dip the white cloth down into the, the purple dye, they would put it, they wouldn't sprinkle it. Hallelujah. I'm not trying to mess with anybody in their religion, but they wouldn't sprinkle it because it would become a polka dot white and purple cloth. What they would do is they would saturate it. They would take it under. That's why we baptize you by taking you down under the water and bringing you back up un over the water because we want you to get the full experience of what the word actually means. 
that you got to be saturated. I mean, come on, somebody. Some folks have their feet on one side of the fence. You're one of them sprinkle folks, amen. You're one of those folks. That I'm not making. I'm not making um, any kind of noise right now about folks that sprinkle because it's in your heart. Whether or not you've been sprinkled, some folk think that I'm not saved. Baptism doesn't save you. It just illustrates what Christ does for you. But but when you take that white cloth and put it down in that purple dye, when it brought back, when it was brought back up, every fiber of that cloth had been saturated with that expensive purple dye and people were willing to pay anything for it because it had value. It had substance and it was the thing of the day. Hallelujah. It was the, I don't know what's, what's very expensive these days. Y'all know I, I ain't that kind of um, folks, but, but, but you know, some of these expensive sneakers and some of these expensive jeans and some of these expensive jackets and all these, all, all these name brand things, but it was the name brand thing back then to have purple cloth. And, and when that purple cloth came back out, you never knew that it was white. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was no remnant of what it used to be. How many folks know what I'm talking about right now? Amen. Jesus is trying to help us to understand that I'm, I, I brought you through 2021. And I know it's been some trial and I know it's been some challenge, but, but you, were, you were a white cloth back in 2021. But in 2022, I'm getting ready to dip you. Hallelujah. Amen. Let somebody let the, to talk about this. Come on, dip me, Lord. Dip me, Lord. Say, dip me, Lord. Dip me, Lord. I want you to dip me. I need me some purple dye on me. And I don't want any remnant of what I used to be. I want what you got for me that's brand new. I want to take the lessons that I learned back in 2021 and apply them to 2022 so that God, I can be fresh and brand new. I want a new thing and I want to be a new, uh, I want to be a new person. So, so guess what? Night, uh, 2022 comes with a brand new you. It's a, somebody needs to rescue, recognize right now that this 2022 is going to come with a brand new you, but you've got to be able to, to take that little emphatic that Paul taught those people back then and say no to some things. Some things are going to try to keep you hanging back in 2021. Some things are going to keep you trying to remember stuff that you struggled with in 2021. And God says no, hallelujah, because you need to say no to 2021, but yes to 2022. You need to say yes to some new stuff that God has got in, inclined for you, that God's got prepared for you. He said this, that, that when you're baptized into Christ Jesus, you were baptized into his death. Get a revelation that you weren't just baptized just for the fun of it, but you were baptized into somebody who was getting ready to go on a cross on Calvary to take all the sins of the world. I can hear, I can hear John the Baptist saying right now, look, there goes the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. And when he took away the sins of the world, hallelujah, he took the weight off of me. He took all the, he took all the scars away from me. Is your heart broken? Have you been scarred? Have you been through battles? Have you been through struggles? Have you been, uh, have you been lost in some places? Have you been weary and, 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 and work and, and work to the bone? Have you been, have, have you been lost in your struggle? Have you been lost in a challenge? I need you to understand that God is saying that I don't need you staying connected to what used to be. I need you to get connected to what can be in the future. Hallelujah. He's saying this, that you've been baptized into a death. And, and the good thing about this death is that when you got baptized into the death, some folks like to stay dead because they believe that Jesus Christ is dead. You're serving the wrong God. I need you to understand that your, he said, I'm that dead. He's yet alive. Our God is not dead. Our God is alive because when they put him, hallelujah, on the cross, they, he bowed his head. He gave up the ghost and then they put him in a tomb and, and put a rock over it. Hallelujah. But, but, but when the women came early the next morning and they rolled the, the stone was rolled away, they found that Jesus was no longer in the grave because what? He was no longer dead. He had risen from the dead. He's not dead. He's yet alive. God said dead stuff, hallelujah, is just preparation for a living, living stuff. And so sometimes you got to, you got to trample on what's been dead, hallelujah. You got to trample on what's been frustration for you. You got to trample on what's been trouble for you. You got to trample on what's been uh, um, darkness for you. Hallelujah. And just be able to say that whatever dark thing was in my life, it was just preparation.
preparation. It's a dead thing, but dead in Jesus is preparation for life in Jesus. Verse 4 says, therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was, look at this, raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that in order to walk in the newness of life, you got to recognize that, that, that you're buried in Christ. And if you're buried in Christ, then, then when Christ got up, you got up. I don't know about you, but I'm connecting myself so tight with Jesus that when he walks, I walk. I'm connecting myself so tight with Jesus Jesus in this brand new year that when he when, when, when he sits down I sit down when he rises up I rise up I'm connecting myself with Jesus that when he says yes I say yes I'm connecting myself so tight with Jesus that when he says no I say what no hallelujah I'm, I'm, I'm saying I'm not going to just be a remnant of myself I'm connecting myself with the king of kings and the lord of lords I'm connecting myself with the master hallelujah teacher. I'm connecting myself with the one who is my bridge over every trouble. I'm connecting myself with the one who is the lover of my soul. I'm connecting myself with the one who is the who picks me up, takes my feet out of the miry clay that gives me what I don't deserve, hallelujah, and doesn't give me what I do deserve. I'm connecting myself with the one who loves me beyond my faults and, and tells me to get up and keep moving on up. I'm connecting with myself with the one who says you're not dead because if you're in me and I'm in you, I got up from the grave. And so if I'm alive, you got to be alive. I need you to shed some grave clothes on this 2021 journey right now and put on some brand new clothes. I'm talking about the new clothes of righteousness. I'm talking about the new clothes, hallelujah, of purity, of holiness. I'm talking about the new clothes of confidence in Jesus Christ. Christ, the new clothes that has faith that he will help you to succeed in everything that he purposes for you to do. And yes, you might have some, some valleys, but I need you to know that the Lord of the valley has got your back. And I know that there might be some high hills, but I've got news for you, good news for you, that the Lord of the hills, the one who created the hills, knows the way how to get over the hill. He won't leave you, forsake you. He won't, he won't keep you in the dark. He'll be your light because he is is the light of the world. He is, hallelujah, your, your friend in times of trouble. He is everything that you stand in need of. This Jesus that Paul was trying to help these folks to understand is that, listen, you can't just connect yourself to what was. you got to connect yourself with who is. And he said that I am. He said before Abraham was, I am am. Hallelujah. That means that I'm alive at every single moment. And if you connect yourself with Jesus, that you'll find out that there's more life in you. You've got to press forward. You've got to move ahead. You've got to stretch farther. Your life is not over. I know it might be tough right now, but you've got the one, the battle axe that's with you on your back, on your side right now. You've got the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. You've got a healer. You've got a deliverer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've got a, a way out of no way. You've got the bridge. Hallelujah. You've got the light. Hallelujah. In dark places. You've got the one who is everything. He is the creator of the world. He is the redeemer of mankind. He is the recreator of the world. Hallelujah. He is everything that you stand in need of. If you've got Jesus, you've got all that you stand in need of. Somebody ought to get excited about this Jesus in 2022. That that I'm not going to have the old relationship. I'm going to say no to that so I can say yes to Jesus. Amen. I'm going to say no to bad patterns so I can say yes to Jesus. I'm going to say no to lethargy and, and, and laziness so that I can say yes to energy and talk and walk with Jesus. I'm going to say yes to him, to my master and say, God, I'm ready for the journey. Are you ready for the journey? That's what I'm asking you right now. Can you, is there a, is there a no in your spirit because if there's a no in your spirit then there is a yes hallelujah but you've got to have a revelation that the yes 
hallelujah, has got to take precedence right now. You got to be able to say no to the fact that the enemy doesn't want you to say yes. Some folks got some folks, hallelujah, would rather have houses and land. Some folks choose silver and gold. These things we treasure and forget about our souls, but I decided in 2022 to make Jesus my choice. Will it be your choice is what I'm asking. Will it be the lover of your soul? Will he be the one that you point to? Will he be the one that you go to? Will he be the one that you confide in? Will he be the one that you trust in? Will he be your rock, hallelujah, in a weary land? Will he be the one that can help you to walk over water? Will he be the one that will part the Red Sea in your life? Will he be the raiser of dead things in your life? Will he be the one who can who, who can heal your body, who can who can turn you from, from bad things to good? Will you allow him to be who he is to you? That's all I'm asking you today is that you will take the opportunity right now in the midst of this year as we get ready to cross over. Somebody say cross over. That, that, that when we get ready to cross over, hallelujah, that, that God says that I'm right here waiting for you. I'm not back in that time. I'm, I'm ahead of you. In fact, I'm Alpha and I'm Omega. And I'm the beginning and the end. Amen. That where you, when you step over, I'm already into 2022. And if the first thing you embrace, hallelujah, is me, then the first thing I'll embrace is you. What you make happen for others, he'll make happen for you. But God said this, that if you take care of my house, I'll take care of your house. How did he say that, Pastor? He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. Y'all say this with me. I'm just about finished with you right now. All these things, all these things, everything that you desire, everything that you're that you're moving forward toward, everything that you that, that you're trying to get to, everything that you can get vision for, all these things, your food, hallelujah, your sustenance, your peace, hallelujah, your power, your protection, your provision, your productivity, hallelujah, your purpose and your prosperity, all these things shall be added unto you. I declare over you right now, as we have five minutes left, left in this brand new year, hallelujah, in this old year, getting ready to cross over into a brand new year, as we say this, I'm going to prophesy over over you that you'll do greater things than you've ever done in the previous year. That as you embrace, hallelujah, your yes in Jesus, that your no will be solidified. Shall I live in sin? Hallelujah. No, because sin weighs me down. Sin causes me not to have the right kind of relationship. I can't live, I can't have a love affair with sin and a love affair with righteousness at the same time. Joshua said, You got to choose you this day whom you're going to serve, whether it be God or whether it's going to be man. You've got to understand that God says, I'm not going to share you with anybody, but if you'll give me your undivided attention, and if you'll just give me your heart, if you give me your mind and your soul and your strength, and if you give me your resource, I'll give you me, and you'll have everything that you stand in need of to get to the place that I want you to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does somebody know a God like that? Do you know a God like that on tonight? I got to ask you this question, that if you don't know him, if you never made him your Lord and your Savior, if you never asked him into your life, it's as easy as this. To say, Jesus, I heard a preacher man say this, that if you cry out the name of Jesus, because he recognizes that as a call for his help. He recognizes that we understand that we are sinners, that we are bound by sin, and that we are trapped in death places. But Jesus wants to offer you brand new life. He wants you to live. He wants you to live in this new year. You say, Pastor, I'm already living. But I say, no, that's that's just a shallow kind of life. But God's got everlasting life for you. And once you've got everlasting life, you've got vision, you've got purpose for greater. You've got a reason to pull out of the miry clay and you've got a reason to press forward toward the mark for the prize. 
if you'll say this, that I received Jesus into my life and into my heart, God will say this, I'm here, and he will save you. For if you will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible declares that you will be saved. And if that's a promise that I can vouch and verify that the Lord has saved my soul. And if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. Won't you ask him into your life? Hallelujah. I, wanna, I want us to just meditate on this as we move forward into this next minute that the that the old the old hymn writer said this great is thy faithfulness O God my father there is no shadow of turning with thee all I have need at my hand, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto thee. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have need that thy hand hath provided. Great is thy thankfulness, Lord, unto me. Hallelujah. Will you tell him that he's been faithful? Will you just take this moment? And just give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. We got six seconds before the clock is getting ready to turn. And I want you to make a, a turn in your mindset. I want you to make a turn in your attitude. Hallelujah. That I believe right now that the clock has struck 12. That we have been on watch for this 12 o'clock hour. And we, have, we will give the Lord glory and honor. And give the Lord our worship. Give the Lord our praise. Somebody say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, Lord God. Tell them I'm going with you. I'm loving on you. I'm seeking after you. I'm chasing after you right now, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for keeping my soul through the, through the old year, Lord God. And I thank you for what you've done in the old year. But I thank you, Lord God, that the brand new mercies of God were waiting for me in this brand new year. Because gr brand new are your mercies, your compassions are, are new every day, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for ushering us into this brand new year year. Tell your neighbor, put it out in the atmosphere. Tell somebody in the room with you. Tell somebody, Happy New Year. Happy Just tell New yourself year. Happy New Year right now. Year. Tell yourself Happy New Year. Tell yourself it's a brand new year mm. and it's a brand new you. Hallelujah. Brand that I got a whole lot, hallelujah, to do with Jesus. How many folks can agree with me right now? Amen. I want y'all to take a moment and say Happy Birthday to Sister Jaquetta Larimore and Happy Birthday today Today is your birthday, hallelujah, on the first day of the brand new year. And Sister Rosa Bennett, we thank God for, for their birthdays on today. Hallelujah, Rosa Bennett and to Sister Jaquetta. Larry Moore, we say happy birthday. What a special day that we have moved over into a brand new year. Brand new blessings, amen. Brand new mercies, hallelujah. Brand new strength, amen. And I want to just tell you at this moment, hallelujah, as it's 1201, I want you to go and just give somebody some love. Call somebody and tell them happy new year. But tell them something like this. God's got something big for you this year. God's got something brand new for you in this brand new year, amen. That if you say no to yesterday and say yes to this brand new 
thing that God has got going on for you. Amen. Hallelujah. We bless you. We honor God. We say that we love you. We, we say thank you for what you've done. Hallelujah. How you persevered. We thank all the soldiers. Hallelujah. Of the Haskell Heights First Baptist Church family for just persevering and moving in through a new brand new year. We say we love you and we remind you to worship our King. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. We thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Now may the grace and favor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest, rule, and abide with you henceforth now and forevermore. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, Amen. 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 God Amen. bless you. Happy New Year. We love Year. you. Amen. I would say good night, but I'm going to say good morning. Amen.